drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be sharing my fast and easy hoppy golden owl recipe. In addition to this, I will also share my brew methods as well as the knowledge that you will need so that you can design your own recipes to this hoppy version of the style, plus also a regular golden owl style too. Let's begin with an analysis of this style. This beer style is certainly a hybrid one and combines elements of the IPA and golden owls together. On screen there are some commercial examples of this style. You will notice some call it golden IPA also. Taste-wise, you should expect a crisp and fresh-tasting beer with nice bready malt backbone that gives you a plenty of hop flavour and aroma. This style is very refreshing, yet more complex than a normal IPA or golden ale. I believe that such a beer can be consumed year-round, and it certainly is in my house. So let's now look at what makes up this style from a recipe writing point of view. The twist of the hoppy golden ale is simply hops, so the main grain bill element remains consistent with its mother's style. A typical base malt for this style will involve either palm malt or pilsner malt at 50% plus of the grist. Sometimes these are mixed also. German pilsner malt can work particularly well with its more flavourful sweet malty flavours. US 6 row malt will also work with its extra grainy character. Do not be afraid to use two rail pal malt though, as there are plenty of other flavours to be found in the supporting malts of the grist and also of course the hops. An English two row malt will also add in a light biscuit flavour that can also be a delight in such styles. So as you can see, there are plenty of options here to suit every taste palette. Munich and Vienna are commonly used in a golden ale and will add more of a malty taste as well as some sweetness. I would recommend staying within 20% of the grist with these malts if you wish to keep this within BJCP style. I personally prefer one or the other, but as always experiment yourself and find out which you prefer. This style be very careful with crystal malts or speciality grains. Keep them low as possible as these could mute flavours that you really want to bring to the forefront. This is the same with the golden ale itself and also the hoppy style also. Certainly avoid anything high in EBC or colour. It is becoming more and more popular to add wheat to these styles, just like it was in the old days actually, for head retention and mouthfeel instead of more crystal. I find this trade-off to be very agreeable personally, as little colouring is needed, but of course mouthfeel is important. Head retention, that's a matter of taste of course. You will find that it's quite popular to use between 5 and 10% wheat in this style. This of course will add in more protein, and as such will work against clarity, but getting one of these clear with such a small amount of wheat should be no issue at all. Personally, I like to use a little crystal and a little wheat, as you will see in my recipe. It works very well. When it comes to yeast, then this is the main component that usually defines a golden ale. But with the hoppy hybrid, some of the yeast flavour will be masked by the hops, of course. With the hoppy style, it really comes down to how sweet or dry you want your end beer to be. So look at the attenuation rate. It can be fun to use a Belgian yeast, but of course you will experience less of its flavours than usual, so you may see that it's wasted with this hybrid style. Something dry and American, or not so dry and English, work very well. You will find that alcohol strength and bitterness varies wildly in this style also, so I suggest that you think about the balance that you are desiring, and use the bittering units to alcohol ratio, and make sure it's consistent with what you have in mind, coupled with the attenuation rate of your chosen yeast. When it comes to hop choice, this is also very wide open. You will see versions that use traditional noble hops that were first associated with golden ale styles alongside versions that have big citrus American hop flavours and others using super fruity New Zealand hops. Enjoy the freedom and go wild, it will still be to style. 
Another thing of note is that 3 plus mash steps really has a nice effect on such a beer style, hoppy or not, and it adds another level of complexity. I suggest that you experiment with this and see where your sweet spot is. So here is my recipe. This is very tried and tested, so brew with confidence. This recipe can also be found in this video's description and also on the Grainfather Recipe Tools website. I call this recipe fast because there is no need for a boil time more than 30 minutes and this also adds in its own taste effect that works really well with this style. Do note that this is for 20 litres or 5.28 US gallons. If you wish to brew a different amount then you will need to use a beer calculator to do the math for you. While the grain is simple maths, the hops are not. So if you are unsure how to do this, then please check out my recipe resizing guide video, which is also available on this YouTube channel. Also, please keep in mind that you will need to match your hops to mine by ensuring that each edition is delivering the same IBU level, as it is obviously highly unlikely that the alpha acid content of your hops will be the same as mine. This is of course not necessary for dry hopping. Okay, so let's go through my recipe and I will explain the effect that this method and these ingredients will have and what the end result will be. Firstly, by only boiling the wort for 30 minutes, not only are we saving a little bit more time, but more importantly, we are holding in more hop flavour and aroma, and even low hop beers seem to taste more flavourful. This is a technique that I use for beer styles that do not require a higher IBU. It certainly works well with this style. In addition to this, I have three mash steps in this brew, which will develop a more complex character to the beer compared to the usual two. Of course, this is desirable in this style, it may not be desirable in all styles of course. 66% of our grain bill is pot power malt, and this will provide the majority of the fermentables, but also a fairly blank canvas that our other malts will add flavour to. Coming in at 22% of the grain bill is Munich malt. In general I prefer this malt to Vienna and would rather use it on its own rather than in combination with Vienna. This is building a large part of the malt character of this beer as well as adding in a background sweetness. How this sweetness develops when using this mash profile will be down to your choice of yeast. The yeast I am using is a nice middle ground between dry and sweet. Next at 7% of our grain bill is Cara Malt. This has a low EBC score of 30 and will add in a mild sweet toffee flavour to your beer, which really is a very nice part of this style. This provides a nice balance for the hop content and in this malt combination allows the whole thing to sing. I particularly like the Simpsons malt version of Cara Malt the best. This is a malt type to experiment with in different brews to understand and experience the differences between versions from different malt houses. Cara malt will also add in some mouthfeel and of course some colour. At this EBC it is ideal for a nice golden colour. Lastly at 5% we have malted wheat. This will add in a very small amount of flavour, aroma and texture, but it will also aid in head retention. I really like the effect that wheat has on a hoppy beer style, but do keep in mind that by using it you will need to be especially careful when it comes to anything that could potentially oxidise your beer. With good protective techniques, this beer could actually last six months or more, which is plenty of time for me. What I would advise you to do is look at your process and drinking time and work out if it is suitable for you. It's a shame if it isn't, but not as big a shame as a sizable amount of beer that needs to be thrown away. Let's look at our hops now. I have used Warrior in the brew for bittering because I did not want the bittering hop to deliver a harsh level of bitterness. I want it to be super smooth for this style. Warrior is perfect for this. It is also very neutral in flavour and as such perfect for not interrupting the flavouring hops that I want this beer to push forward. Had I used one of the other two hop types in this hop schedule, then the bitterness profile would not have been anywhere near as smooth. For flavour and aroma, I have selected a pairing of citra and laurel hops. This pairing was made in heaven, in my opinion. 
I am sure everyone is very familiar with Citra, but Laurel is a fairly new hop that has only existed since May 2016, and it really didn't start turning up in commercial beers until 2017. Laurel has floral, fruity and citrus flavours and aromas in the main, along with some herbal and dark fruit. Paired alongside Citra you'll get a wide range of tropical fruit flavours and aromas, and it just feels like these two hops were designed to be used together. Fruit flavours will include lime, grapefruit, orange, mango, lychee, gooseberry, lemon and some dark stone fruit. By using Citrus Solo at 15 minutes, then whirlpooling both together at zero and solo dry hopping with Laurel, I feel that you get a nice balance between these two hops for this style. I have tried various variations of this and none have tasted as good as this one according to most people who have tried all the other versions. Naturally this is something to experiment with yourself also, but this is what I have decided works best for this style for me and my crowd. The end result of this recipe is a complex one. You have something that is very easy drinking, packed full of citrus and tropical fruit flavours that seem to vary as you get down the glass. During the taste you are also met with a nice yet complex malt background as well as a herbal quality that is also further in the back. If you use the Liberty Bell yeast then it will not be super dry nor super sweet, just nicely in the middle. The beer is certainly very refreshing and acts as a great thirst quencher, but because there is more malt and hop balance here than a standard IPA, you will enjoy more complexity that is often found in stronger styles, and yet at this alcohol level it is perfectly sessionable. Before I show you some of my brew footage from this particular brew, here is a reminder of other videos available on this channel. If you are new to the Grainfather, then check out my Grainfather Quick Start Guide to get up to speed quickly. If you are actually looking at buying a Grainfather, then check out my review after 100 brews. Not only will this tell you all about the system, but I also show the modifications that I have made to mine to perfect it. If you would like to learn more about clarity and clearing of beer, then I have a good guide to this on the channel. Or perhaps you fancy brewing something else golden, and then you should check out my brew of a Belgian blonde. Ok, so here is some highlight footage from my brew day. This wort took a little while to clear during the mash, but once it did it was looking very nice, even in this undiluted form. Once the bowl started, the fine aromas of these hops began to fill the air, and I was in brew heaven. The boil of course was soon over being just 30 minutes and before I knew it I was having fun with my drill for the whirlpool. After the 15 minute hop stand I did some quick chilling and then was back on the drill for wall aeration. Oh the fun. So there you have it, this wraps up another video. Many thanks to all my regular viewers for all of your thumbs up and kind comments, and welcome to those of you who are new subscribers. I do hope you found this video to be useful, informative and enjoyable. Please let me know. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy brewing!